Hey guys, thanks for joining me tonight for the Midweek Moment. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Hope the Lord is blessing you and you're walking in His favor. Uh, tonight we're going to look at a subject that I think is very important and I certainly think it's applicable to today. And that is treatment for a troubled heart. Treatment for a troubled heart. I think we all realize that heart issues are very prominent in our world today. And they're the result oftentimes of bad DNA or maybe a bad diet or maybe just bad thinking. Because we know as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And sometimes our thinking, our negative thinking, produces anxiety and worry in our heart. And I have to believe that today stress and anxiety are at an all-time high. When you think about everything going on in our world, we've got a war over in Ukraine, uh, we're dealing with high prices, we're dealing with inflation, uh, we've dealt with a pandemic, and apparently we're still dealing with this virus or some new strain of the virus. There's political strife, gas prices, food prices, crime, and the list goes on. Fortunately, today, modern medicine and technology with all their advancements can provide many options to treat life-threatening heart issues. I'm not a doctor, but I know people that have had angioplasty and some people have had pacemakers or artery bypass. Sometimes people have a heart stent. Sometimes people have an actual heart replacement. So it's incredible what medicine can do today for the human heart. Jesus, believe it or not, in John chapter 14 is addressing heart issues. He's talking about having a troubled heart. So what I want to do tonight is I want us to look at the advice that Jesus gave uh, his disciples, and I believe for us today, to help alleviate a troubled heart, to help minimize the worry and the anxiety that life causes us, all right? So let's jump right into it. First of all, we're told that trust can calm a troubled heart. Chapter 14, verse number one, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is talking about trust. And he's speaking, I believe, about stress and worry as it relates to his disciples. You have to remember, these guys were stressing out. These guys were full of anxiety and worry. We know that Jesus, at this time in his ministry, had withdrawn from public ministry. He was no longer speaking publicly. We know the religious leaders were trying to kill him. And we know that uh, he just told the disciples that Judas was going to betray him and Peter was going to deny him. So you have to believe these guys were full of anxiety. They had to be absolutely freaking out, especially Peter. Now I know there's a lot happening, uh, but you have an option. That's what he's telling them. So I know there's a lot going on. I know there's a lot going to be transpiring, but you guys have an option. If you trust the Heavenly Father, trust me. If you trust the Heavenly Father, you have to trust me. I often think about when it comes to the subject of trust, what uh, Solomon said in Proverbs chapter three. Uh, some of my favorite verses in the Bible. Verse number five goes something like this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he will make, listen, he will make your path straight. So Jesus tells us if you want to calm a troubled heart, start with trusting in him. And then he talks about concentrating on the promises rather than the problems. Concentrate on the promises rather than the problems. And the first promise he gives us here is your future is positive. In John chapter 14, verse number 2, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would not have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. So he's saying, guys, listen, if you thought something was true and it wasn't true, I would have told you. I would have pointed it out to you. I would have corrected you. But there is dwelling places in my Father's house. The word dwelling place means rooms. So in other words, Jesus is saying to them, there are many rooms, there are many places to live in my Father's house. He's talking about the future. Focus on the promise and the future is bright. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. 
You know, if you look in John's gospel between uh, verses 13 and 17, I believe John mentions the word Father 53 different times. It's about the Heavenly Father. It's about the Son of God and trusting in them. Obviously, uh, you and I haven't experienced death. We don't know what death is like. But I am confident that according to the Scripture, when we, when we die, when we take our last breath, we are going to pass into eternity. And we're either going to spend our eternity in the dwelling place of God, in the kingdom of God, or in a place called Hades and eternal punishment. Now, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, but for me, it's a pretty simple choice. I want to spend eternity in my Father's house. Listen to me, heaven is real, and Jesus is preparing an eternal home for all of us. And our eternal home will be determined by the choice that we make now in this life about what we're going to do with Jesus. Are we going to believe in Jesus? Are we going to accept Jesus? Are we going to turn from our, our, our sin and follow Jesus? Listen, don't play with eternity. So he tells them, if you want to calm a troubled heart, remember your future is positive. And then remember, I'm coming back for you. Remember, I'm coming back for you. Look at verse number three. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will be also. Again, I can't overemphasize the stress and the worry and the anxiety these disciples had to be dealing with. He told them he's going to be leaving, but he's prescribing something for their troubled heart. I mean, if you think about it, these guys depended on Jesus for three years. He was everything to them. He was their counselor. He was their spiritual guide. He's the one that provided food, and the list goes on. So these guys, again, were freaking out. But he tells them, I will come again. You haven't seen the last of me. Remember, when it becomes difficult and dangerous, Peter, when it becomes difficult and dangerous, you remember that this is not your home, that you're just passing through, and that there is a place in heaven. And remember, that I am coming back for you. I think Paul talked about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we have some great, great words from the Apostle Paul talking about heaven and the promise that we have regarding our future and that Jesus is coming back. Watch this. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Man, is that not good? I mean, you ought to be shouting right now just hearing the words of the Apostle Paul. Remember where I am, you will be also. The Lord is coming back for us. And that's what he was trying to tell them. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be challenging, but I'm trying to calm your troubled heart. I'm coming back for you, and in my Father's house, I'm preparing a place for you. So the entire focus of heaven is being united with Jesus. Now I know the Bible talks about heaven having streets of gold and pearly gates, and all those things are great. But what makes heaven heaven is not the gold and the pearls. What makes heaven heaven is Jesus is there. And we're going to be reunited with Jesus. Again, Paul said in verse 17, then we will be with the Lord forever. How good is that? How good is that? When your world is falling apart, take a deep breath and remember this won't last. Remember that whatever you're going through is a season, it's a storm. The scripture calls it momentary light affliction. But we are on a journey called life and there's gonna be ups and downs in life. But we have an eternal home. And when you're getting filled with anxiety and stress and worry about everything going on, try to remember that focusing on Jesus and trusting in him will help calm your anxiety and remember 
to focus on the promises. And there are so many promises of God rather than the problems. Heaven is real. Jesus is going to get us out of here. And we're going to spend eternity with Him and all of those who have ever trusted Him. We're going to be reunited with our friends and our loved ones in heaven. It's real. It's going to be a wonderful place. Let that calm your troubled heart. I've enjoyed spending time with you tonight. I hope you have a great remainder of your week. I'm looking forward to seeing you Sunday, 9-15 or 11-15. See you later. Thank you.